Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about how we can actually load JSON data from a JSON data stream and use that to actually put it inside a file in an iOS app. So we're going to take a look right here. Um, I've got my load JSON method. It's in my utilities.swift file, which I have here in my resources directory as part of my project. And so what we need to do is we need to make it so we can actually load a file in here. First thing we have is our actual JSON data itself. So right here I have my bucket list data where it has the information for the students' bucket list items, things they want to be able to do by the end of the calendar year for different years. I also have my food access simplified JSON data, which is the custom data set that I built as we're talking about the project earlier. We're trying to actually make our own data set using that information from the Corgis data set so we can do some cool stuff on our own. And so I've got two different JSON files I have with information inside that. And I want to make it so I can have a single method that can load any type of data and use it inside my project. So that's what we're working with right now. So let's go back to utilities.swift right here. And so my utilities.swift, I have a method called load JSON from file that returns a type, a list of any type. So it takes a, um, whatever that file name is and returns a list of some type. In this case right here, I use the any keyword because I don't know what kind of data it is. I could have any kind of stuff I'm working with. And so that any is a generic type I can use for any type of thing I'm working with. And so what I do is I first try and get a resource URL for that data. So this, since this is inside my app itself, it's built right in. I use the bundle.main.url for resource and I pass it the file name, that parameter right here that we sent from the actual call of the method with extension JSON because those are the extensions I use for those files right there. And so it, and that's just all I have to do to actually get access to it. Since I'm using the if let structure, if it fails, if for some reason that file doesn't exist, it simply goes down to the very end and returns simply in the list of nothing, which really doesn't do anything, which is great because I mean, it doesn't crash, it just gives us nothing and we move on. But if I am successful, I'm going to use data.try and I'm going to use the force unwrap because I, um, I'm going to do turn this to data because it's, it's JSON data. It should definitely be convertible to a data type because it's just straight JSON data. It's one I created myself. I know it's good and valid. And if it's one that you've actually created or downloaded, you've verified already, it's going to work no matter what. So you're good to go. Now, that's the only time I can use this exclamation point for that force unwrap because I know it's going to be convertible to data. If you can't guarantee it's going to be convertible to data, you might want to have a backup data option because that will crash the app if it doesn't work. But that's okay. Then I'm going to do let decoder equal JSON decoder because I'm going to have that built-in support for JSON right here inside Swift, which is wonderful. It makes life amazingly easy. Then we have our do catch block. The do catch block is how I'm going to try some code that is compilable. It's good code, but I don't know if it's going to throw errors. So do this, and if there is an error, catch it, and then proceed on with that. So that's the idea that we're working with on that. And so if my file is buckets2022, so I've been talking about my bucket list items, then results is going to be try decoder.decode, and I have the type of thing I'm getting. In this case, it's a list of bucket list items, and I use the dot self because I have to have that meta recognition so I can return it like, oh, I'm identifying as a bucket list item inside the meta access of my code. Where am I getting this from? The data I just retrieved outside of that. Okay, cool. And then I return it. Otherwise, if it's food access simplified for my food access data, then I return that one. And then if you want to do whatever kind of type you're working with, you do the same approach and then decode your JSON data and then return it your, on your own. You want to make sure you return it explicitly within this block because, again, once you've got it, you don't need to go anything further. You don't want to return this anything. You want to return immediately after that point because that's the only data you want to be returning at this time. If there is an error, of course, you catch that error and print the description so you can then do debugging if necessary. One of the most common errors with this is you have an incorrect type name, like you spelled it with a capital A instead of a lowercase a, or a typo inside the actual name itself, inside either your struct or inside the JSON data cell itself. Take a look and fix that and then go and try it again, and you should usually take care of that problem right away. And so that's how we actually get so it will actually load that data. To see this example in action, we're going to go ahead to our dataview.swift. That's the root view of the project we're working with. And so as you can see right here, I have my buckets, and I'm assigning it load JSON from buckets 2022. And because it returns a list of any by the very type of it, I downcast it, or I cast it to the type of bucket list item list, which is what it's supposed to be anyway. So it's going to catch automatically. And again, I'm using that exclamation point because I know it's going to work. That exclamation is that force casting. And because I know it's going to work, it's good. And as you can see right here, I've got my bucket list items that work. And it translates that bucket list data as JSON and translate into a bucket list item type that we have in Swift that I can then display on the view appropriately. I hope this is a helpful way so you can actually go through that. Again, I have a utilities file that I load that information in. I simply just get a URL for the resource inside my application using the bundle.main.url. I then decode it using JSON, built-in decoder, works wonderfully. Make sure the type maps to the appropriate type, a list of either bucket list items or food access or whatever type you're working with so you can get that array of items so you can load that information in. And then I just simply put it inside my view. I hope this is helpful. Cheers. See you next time and have a great day. Bye-bye.